Welcome to Top EVT. This is me Jamie. We thank our viewers for all the support that they have given us for they helped us to cross 20,000 views total on all our videos on this channel and we are really happy about this. And to celebrate this from today we wanted to start a new segment where you the viewers can post topics in the comments below for the videos you want to see and the best comment provided that they are of an appropriate nature will be chosen and and we will create the video with your comment shown within the next 24 to 48 hours and we will post it on the channel today the topic that we are going to discuss is long distance drive on a motorcycle what are the tips for long distance drive on a motorcycle I was lucky enough to have a journey of more than 1800 kilometers within two days on my sports bike. It's not ideal to do this kinds of distances on a sports bike but I was able to do it and I did it in India which is one of the hardest places to do such long drives. I just wanted to share my experiences about long distance drives and what I've learned through this trip. I have covered greater distances in my car. I have traveled a lot on my car but this was a first time that I was thinking to do it on my bike. When I presented the idea to my friends and my family, they were actually skeptical at first. They thought it is not possible to do such a thing on especially doing such kinds of distances on a superbike. It is not safe and it is not possible because of the sitting position that is what they said. But I just wanted to do this one time in my life. If you have the option to do this journey on a cruise bike then I would suggest doing it on a cruise bike rather than a super bike because it just hammers your back and your back will be sore once you have completed such long distances. Only do these kinds of distances on a super bike if you really love riding and these kinds of riding that is long distance riding actually thrills you. I'm not naming my bike in this video and the only reason I'm not doing that is I don't want a fight in the comments about which bike is best. But this is more about the journey that you are taking and what you have to do to endure these kinds of distances on a bike. So let's begin. The first step that I want to offer and it is it should be an obvious for anyone who rides a motorcycle especially who is thinking of riding these kinds of distances on a motorcycle is invest in good riding gear. You should have a good helmet because a good helmet will be giving you better wind protection and it will reduce the noise that you will get. Your riding gear also should be complete. You should have gloves, you should have riding shoes and make sure you get arm pads, knee pads, all kinds of guards that you can afford because if you have a crash on your bike there is nothing to save you. In, in a car there is the car itself to save you but on a bike you are totally exposed. When you're riding these kinds of distances the chances of a accident are really high so riding gear is a must and try to invest in really good quality riding gear because that could be the only difference from returning back alive or ending up dead. The second tip and one of the most important tips I want to give you is go slow to reach there fast. Now when you hear this it will actually sound a bit weird but it actually works. When I started my journey I was doing triple digit speeds and I was trying to gun the throttle all the way trying to reach in order to cover as much distance as possible. But what actually happened with this is I noticed that I was getting tired very soon and because I was getting tired I was stopping a lot. In a long journey it is a marathon not a sprint so you should be able to keep up a good pace preferably around 100 kilometers if possible if you should actually go lower if the roads are bad and if there is windy conditions you should actually go lower somewhere around 70 80 kilometers an hour because those kinds of speeds you can do all day there is no wind hitting you 
there is no road noise to tire you so you will be able to go longer distances because you are not taking as many breaks as if you were going 180 kilometers an hour on the first day i was traveling i actually did a thousand kilometers in the first day itself but that really took a toll on me in the morning i was actually doing triple digit speeds and i was actually doing as fast as i can on the highways but by the afternoon i realized that my entire body was aching and i was literally tired this is because of all the wind that actually hits you it's really hitting your chest even with all the riding gear on you are still hit by the wind it might not be a problem if you have a cruiser with a big windshield and a deflector for that but i was on a sports bike so i wasn't having much protection from the wind the wind really takes a toll on you especially at high speeds the second thing that gets you tired is you are scanning the roads at a really high rate when you're going at a high speed this combined with the wind noise and the noise of the engine and the vibration of the engine all of these things and you're holding on so tight you will end up tired by the afternoon i was tired by the afternoon after my rest stops in the afternoon i actually drove slow and i was going slow for the next distances i actually covered more when i was driving slow at around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour just doing low rpms and you know just cruising around with the bike i was able to do long stretches two hours continuously without brakes three hours continuously without brakes whereas before i used to do a higher speed but i was stopping every one hour because i got tired and i was drinking water and trying to rejuvenate myself the next tip i want to give you from my experience is never have too much luggage with you i didn't carry much luggage but i had a backpack which i was wearing on my back and after some time i understood this was a bad idea because it was actually taking a toll on my back so around 8 am that is around four hours into my journey i actually stopped and i i actually tied the back the back to my back seat after this i was more comfortable so the next rule that you have to follow is carry less luggage as possible and do not keep it on your body try to keep it on your bike so use whatever you have to you have various luggage ties or if possible you can put boxes on your bike anything that you find fit but get all the load off your body it should be on your bike and not on your body the fourth tip that i want to offer is carry a gps with you and mount it on your bike somewhere i was able to mount a gps on the instrument panel in in the dome of my super bike so i was able to get accurate distances and get proper location and routes to where i was going if possible get a gps that has the latest and up updated maps so that you don't get lost in your journey many times there are diversions and things that are roadworks or things that can come up so these things should be updated in, in your map when following your gps it actually helps you a lot because you are not constantly worried if you have lost the route because especially many places they don't have proper road signs and it can be really confusing but if you have a gps you don't have to worry about getting lost you know that you are on the right track and you don't have to stop to ask different people if you are on the right road fifth tip that i want to give you is have your bike prepared before you even think about your trip so if you are leaving the next week try to get your bike serviced and check if you have good tires on it and all of the things all of the fluids are topped off and everything is up to order because especially in super bikes you might not get parts easily if you are stranded somewhere and if you need some kind of a coolant or anything that your bike specially needs oil is really hard to find if your bike needs engine oil after a thousand kilometers if your bike has run out of engine oil and you're trying to source it in some remote location it might not be possible so keep all these things ready get your bike ready for whatever journey that you have planned sixth tip that i want to give you is i didn't have this problem but 
it is a potential problem if you are driving at places that are really cold if you are trying to visit hill stations or if you are in places that gets really cold you should have some kind of snow protection with you because when you're driving on your bike if you are driving through snow flat places it will be really hard and you need to stay warm so get proper attire and whatever is necessary to keep your body comfortable if you are driving through really hot regions do not make the mistake of driving just with a t-shirt on and a pair of shorts keep your body shielded from the elements and use whatever you have to do to keep your body comfortable the seventh tip that we want to look into is what should you be eating when you're traveling on your bike and is it good to have your lunch or should you just be taking fluids what is it that you should do now everyone is different what i personally did was when i was traveling during the day the only thing i used to take was tea coffee energy drinks and various kinds of chocolates that have lots of nuts and similar things so the reason i did this is, is it actually helps the time you don't stop much for your food the only time i used to have my food is early in the morning when i'm starting my journey and in the night just before i clock in that is just before i sleep i i after i check into the hotel wherever i'm staying i would actually have some kind of food i would actually eat enough to keep myself satisfied and the next morning i would be having my food again but during the journey i would try to avoid it as much as possible don't take a very heavy lunch or anything like that because especially when driving your bike if you are just doing a monotonous highway it could end up that you start getting drowsy and you shouldn't be sleepy when you're driving especially when you're driving your bike the eighth tip that i want to give everyone is know when to stop know when you're tired when you're driving your bike you have a certain thing that is planned in your route so you might be thinking i will go to this place and there is where i will stop at certain times what happens is on the journey itself you might get too tired know when you are too tired if you are having difficulty in maintaining a desired speed or if you are trying if you are not able to keep your high beams or low beams according to the oncoming traffic if you are not able to do it quick enough if you are having inability to decide if you want more fuel or not these are signs that are showing that you are tired if this happens if you are feeling tired try to take a small stop and try to rest your eyes for 15 20 minutes and if that doesn't help find a hotel as soon as possible and just get in there and get some rest because that is most necessary do not drive when you are sleepy because that is just calling for trouble the next biggest tip that i want to give you that is the ninth tip so far get gas before you need it don't wait till the last moment to fill up on gas whenever you get into some big cities where you know that you will have quality gas available for your bike make sure you get it even if the tank is just half full there is a chance that you go ahead and ahead and you wait till the last moment and you don't get good gas or you don't get gas at all so do not risk it make sure that you are filling your tank when it is about half full whatever you find right but don't wait till the last moment because the last thing you want is to be stranded somewhere without gas with a super bike i almost had this issue wherein i was actually having enough gas i thought i had enough gas and i was actually going further and further and suddenly i encountered a hilly region with a lot of bends and a lot of climbing and suddenly during these kinds of terrain the average just goes really wild my fuel average actually dropped suddenly and because of all this ghats and the hilly regions that i encountered my fuel suddenly dropped drastically and i almost panicked when i saw that my fuel is going low very soon but luckily i did find gas 
at the right time so i was able to fill it up and i was able to go further so do not do this mistake the 10th tip that we will look into is carry whatever medicines that you need if you have any kind of medical conditions make sure that you have the medicines that are needed for them if you have asthma then try to take your inhalers with you if you have any kinds of uh, problems like sugar or pressure make sure that you have the recommended medicines with you if you have no problems in your body carry aspirins and similar medicines that are used in first aid the 11th tip that i want to give you is carry a tubeless tire puncture repair kit and tire sealant and things that are necessary to help you with a puncture many times what happens is you can be having these problems in a remote region where nothing is available so you do not want to get stranded because of these problems and not just carry them learn how to use them there is a chance that you can be stranded away from civilization so know how to use these things the 12th tip that i would give you is carry extra cell phone batteries it is possible that you might not be able to charge your phone or your phone might run out of charge sooner than possible try to carry more than one phone if it is possible and try to carry many batteries so that you can con contact whoever is needed when you are in an emergency a bonus tip that i want to give you is carry earplugs there are specialized earplugs that are made for riding your bike it will actually isolate the noise and it will actually help you from the fatigue that you get with constant bombardment of the noise that you encounter when traveling the wind noise and the bike noise is really heavy and it can actually tire you sooner than you expect we hope you enjoyed this video that we posted and if you have any comments please leave them in the comments below if you have any journey stories that you want to share leave them in the comments below like share subscribe this was jamie for top evt you have a nice day